Welcome to this edition of Pacific Magazine. We're located here in Im Jim Gok, South Korea to celebrate 60 years of peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. Today, the Republic of Korea has one of the world's strongest economies, but just 60 years ago, this country was left in ruins. On June 25th, 1950, North Korean troops invaded South Korea at the 38th parallel, provoking an international incident. Unprepared for war, the United Nations and United States sent troops to support the Republic of Korea. Nearly two million Americans aided the efforts on the peninsula, fighting alongside South Korean troops for three years in horrible conditions. Finally, after two years of negotiation, on July 27, 1953, guns were silenced on the DMZ. Well, first off, I think the armistice established uh, the procedures to have an immediate ceasefire and a separation of forces. And that separation of forces allowed for the time to, one, prevent another war from occurring. And that's what 60 years has meant. And it's also allowed for stability on the Korean Peninsula. For the United States, we had a large number of forces over here. And today we have uh, 28,500. Because the rocks have assumed the day-to-day -day, uh, operations along the demilitarized zone, with the exception of one small sector where we have a, a, a U.S. Uh, battalion uh, that's combined with the rocks, and it's at Panmunjom. It's uh, allowed, uh, one, the Republic of Korea to take advantage of the opportunity to become a world leader and a world partner on the, on the economic front uh, and a very professional military uh, across the Army forces, uh, Air Forces, Maritime, and, uh, and their special operating forces to be able to provide security on the Korean Peninsula. And that's what the armistice has meant, I believe, uh, to the Republic of Korea. The signing of this agreement marks the beginning of the ROC-US alliance, which has grown into one of the world's strongest alliances. American service members who fought alongside Korean troops are honored each year with a trip to Korea, returning to see the streets they once walked. What these people have done with this country is just unbelievable. Well, first time I come into Seoul, I walked in on a dirt road from Incheon. And this time, the first time I come back, we drove in a state-of-the-art bus, you know, with all this traffic. And it's, somebody said that somebody your age cannot believe what it was like or imagine. And somebody my age, you know, can't believe what it's like now. The, the big difference in the contrast, what these people have done. As the country started rebuilding after the war, the military focused on strengthening and expanding its war fighting capabilities. I think it's extremely important. And like that fellow just said a little bit ago, the difference uh, between the Rock Army then was they just, well, we weren't any better prepared than they were. I don't know if you realize it, but we weren't prepared for the war. Equipment-wise, we had summer equipment and fighting in 40 degree below zero. And uh, so the, the development of both armies is, is remarkable. Uh, the South Korean Army has the reputation now of some of the best soldiers in the world. And Leo is grateful to see with his own eyes. I just appreciate the opportunity to come here. The Korean government has been very good to us. And, and to see the Korean people and the respect they show for us and the, and the other guys is awesome. After catching up on the last 60 years, the veterans came here to the Korean War Memorial where their history is written on the walls. That's a 60 millimeter, that's a 81. Worst thing you want to happen, this is a team, I was on a motor team. 
is drop around in there and you hear a pop, but nothing comes out. That means you got a live round in there somewhere. In those days, what we'd do, one guy, put your hands up here, make sure you don't touch that tip, and then disconnect it there and raise the barrel up, and you hear it, you could hear it coming, shh, slide out of the barrel, and you just lift it out. That was always scary stuff. Yeah, but we used to, because that thing would dig into the ground. See, when you fire, to dig in and break logs. So what we did, we made out of cast rolled steel, a big blaze plate, and put it under that, and it wouldn't go down so far. But that's that was the heavy part. That's, that's what took the carry. People have a lot of different opinions about MacArthur. He was in the ship that that had taken. That's that what he was right? telling us. Wow. And they made us get off our vehicles and stand on the outer side of the road so those tanks could go by. Because they didn't want them too close to the edge because if that road broke off, you know, the tank would yeah. go. And they didn't care about us, but I mean, one, one soldier. <laughs> I haven't been back in 60 years here, and it's remarkable. I couldn't believe my eyes when I seen this country. And Americans have fought for this country here. You see democracy in action right here. American people ought to see it. The people are wonderful. It's unbelievable. They suffered a lot. Of course, we all suffered, but we didn't suffer as much as they did. Little kids, children, women, sad about the war. Hard to eat the sea rations, little kids, you know, hungry. My job every day over here is to prevent war. And we don't want another war on the Korean Peninsula. As we come out of World War II in 1945, we, were, we did not think we were going to fight another war. But uh, the uh, American service members were called into action over here in 1950 as a result of, a, of a aggression by the North Koreans in an attack that occurred on 25 June uh, 1950. And uh, we sent many uh, young Americans to a faraway land uh, where they, and many of them gave their, their lives uh, in defense of freedom. And uh, when you look around and look at Seoul today, 24 and a half million people, what you see is a thriving economy. And you see people that are free. And you see a country that took advantage of an opportunity to succeed and make themselves better. And today, uh, the Republic of Korea is the number 12th uh, economy in the world. Uh, they are a contributing nation uh, as a global partner uh, in many of the conflicts we've been in. They've served with us in Iraq, they've served with us in Afghanistan, the Horn of Africa. Uh, they have folks down in Haiti today uh, that are providing humanitarian assistance. So they're trying to give back to the rest of the world. It just shows what, uh, uh, what it means to be globally engaged uh, and to protect other people so they may have a, a prosperous life in the future. And again, the Republic of Korea and the Korean people took advantage of that opportunity. With the signing of the Armistice Agreement came the Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ. And it's here where Korean war veterans got to experience firsthand what their sacrifices have done for this country. Well, the Armistice Agreement, let's remember, is it's not a political agreement. It's merely a separation of forces. And so when the Armistice Agreement was signed, what happened was military commanders along the line of stagnation marched out to a center point, drove about a three-meter stake into the ground, and that's what defines the military demarcation line. And then the armistice said we would back off two kilometers on either side of that, and that's what established the demilitarized zone. 
The boat that I came on was called the Brewster, which is neither here nor there, but uh, we had uh, three tank battalions on that because uh, the armor here, well, we didn't have a whole lot of it here. The Korean War veterans got to take a trip to the Joint Security Area, a part of the DMZ, and it's here where they get to look directly across into North Korean territory. The senior member of the United Nations Military Armistice Commission shared with us the importance of the JSA soldiers guarding the border. The Joint Security Area provides security for this area. Uh, they conduct tours which remind people of the importance of freedom and that freedom is not free. Uh, now, they do this 365 days a year. 24 hours a day. Uh, it's not a very glorious job, and it's a very dangerous job as well. So these men and women are conducting a mission that is truly important and has great symbolism. My role in this battalion is to provide assistance and security for these visitors, and to deliver them the exact information about uh, the history of the Korean War and the armistice. I feel very proud every day when all, every single uh, visitors that I take care of safely return back to the space after their trip north. I tell them the truth. I tell them that they are important. I tell them that I know how hard it is for them to do their job. Not only is it dangerous, it's monotonous, uh, and it's very easy to fall into a mannerism where you forget how dangerous the situation is. So I try to remind them that they are important, they need to keep safe, they need to train, they need to be vigilant. And uh, they're doing this for their families and the peace of this country as well as Northeast Asia. I think this battalion is symbolic of the Rock us Alliance and that we are serving under a single banner for a single purpose. The Rock soldiers and the US soldiers may have different hair color different languages, different culture. But serving in the JSA, I feel like we are more brothers and more like comrades. I think that the Rock us Alliance is crucial for the peace of the Korean Peninsula and the world. After seeing how Rock soldiers protect the border, we got to visit the Bridge of No Return, where a former Korean POW takes a walk down memory lane. Very emotional. <laughs> when you think 60 years ago, came across this bridge in Russian Molotov trucks <laughs> with all of us in the back of those trucks, still in the blue POW uniform that they had issued us, made we wear. And it, was sure get, it was sure good to get rid of that thing and put on a good old fatigue uniform again. Rally came to Korea in 1950 beside two million other Americans to fight against communist aggression. But unlike many of his fellow soldiers, he spent most of his time in captivity. If there was any torture, there was mental torture. They didn't torture us physically because they tried to convince us that communism was great. You can't beat a guy half to death and convince him that their way of life is, uh, is the very best thing for humanity. And they finally stopped after about 16 months. They, they discovered that they were doing more harm to their cause than good because we were absolutely fed up with what they were trying to teach us and told them just, just you know what they can do with their with their communism they can excuse me put it where the sun doesn't shine looking back at his experience rally can only feel proud to be part of history it's one of the strongest alliances that have ever existed in history is this alliance between uh, the united states and the republic of korea and it's it's great it's a great feeling to to know that I was a part of uh, helping, uh, literally, I think, save the country from communist aggression. All you have to do is look at that lights of the world, that map, you can see the, the difference. After more pictures and a couple of jokes. I wish I could draw, walk out into the middle of this thing. 
The next stop on our journey was to OP Dora, where veterans could overlook more of North Korean territory. We're at Observation Post Dora on the western end of the DMZ. Observation Post Dora during the Chosun Dynasty was a signal fire mountain. And signal fires were a way that the kingdom could use to rapidly communicate emergency messages. In the more recent times, at the last 16, 18 months of the Korean War, this was a Rock Marine Corps general outpost. After the armistice was signed, this area to our front, between here and the military demarcation line, is this place where the POWs, the Chinese and North Korean POWs, that did not want to be returned were kept for interrogation by the Chinese and North Korean officers. These days, it's a working Rock Army guard post within the DMZ, and it is also one of 12 civilian security education sites in or along the DMZ or the Han River estuary. Th these are sites where civilians can come up on security education tours and learn more about the security situation here on the Korean Peninsula. First off, we're proud of their service, and they will never be forgotten. Uh, during that era, many of the folks uh, uh, it was a, uh, termed a forgotten war. And uh, when we send uh, 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 service members into harm's way, uh, we have an obligation, one, that we never forget them and the folks that we send into harm's way, that they know the real reason of why they're uh, uh, going into a situation which may result in them being seriously wounded or they may lose their life. And that is important because that's sacrifice. But service to nation is noble and it's uh, one of the most honorable things that you can do. And, uh, and I think we've got to show our debt of gratitude and appreciation for our veterans. And it's not only on the, on the U.S. side, it's the rock and it's also many of the sending nations. I will tell you that uh, uh, South Korea does a phenomenal job of uh, recognizing the Korean War veterans. And I've been to many of the celebrations where they bring our veterans back and they uh, show them their debt of gratitude and appreciation. And many of the veterans that I've talked to, one, they think that their service in Korea during the period of a, of a very tough war was probably one of the best things they ever done because they see the results of a country that took advantage of an opportunity to grow and, and become a, a world leader, uh, not only uh, uh, from a political sense, but also from an economic sense. When you go back and look what happened after the Korean War, uh, South Korea, the Republic of Korea, is essentially devastated. And we lost 37,000 American lives. Many, many thousands of other lives from the other sending states as well were lost. Now let's look at Korea today. It is one of the best economies in the world. Uh, you can take a picture of a satellite map, a uh, satellite picture of the Koreas, and what you see across South Korea is lights everywhere. It's a growing economy. They've, they've brought a political system, a military system, an economic system, and, and done some really great things with their country. So when the Korean War veterans come back, uh, they look at this country and are absolutely amazed. And they know that their sacrifices, the sacrifices that were made by them and their families during that time were well worth it because Korea took an opportunity that was given to them uh, and they capitalized on that. It's a picture that tells, I mean, it's a, it's a thousand stories in that one picture right there. And it really shows the difference between the two Koreas, between the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and the Republic of Korea. Uh, how a nation, if given an opportunity and if given a chance to do something, can make something of themselves. People all around the Republic of Korea take part in celebrations to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the armistice. These 21 flags represent 21 countries, a coalition that stood against a common foe. This ceremony represents the start of the Korean War. 
I present sincere gratitude on behalf of all the people of the Republic of Korea to the veterans of the UN forces and all distinguished guests that have visited Korea to participate in this event. The Korean War, which broke out due to North Korean invasion, is neither the forgotten war nor a war that can be forgotten. We should maintain our sense of security so we will never have to experience the scars of war again. Rock soldiers performed the promise, showing the vow soldiers made to defend their country. Over at Camp Boniface, about 100 U.S. and Rock soldiers along with Korean nationals commemorate the ceasefire with the second annual Freedom Victory Celebration. This event is a warm welcome for one newcomer. He says the best part is... Just being outside, not working, just having a good time, fun time. Although water gun fights and dance performances are fun, this Louisiana native understands why interacting with local Korean community is important. It shows what we're here for. And it shows the, it shows the rest of the country what we're here for. It reminds me of all those that came here before and all the sacrifices that they went through and to know that there are good soldiers continuing that tradition on and improving on it. For these soldiers stationed on freedom's final frontier, this is a great morale boost. If we don't get a slice of what we're doing this for, then we kind of start to forget. So it's important to have these events so we remember. The Rock U.S. Alliance is as strong as it's ever been. And uh, this year we also celebrate the 60th anniversary of the uh, Mutual Defense Treaty signed uh, 60 years ago between the Republic of Korea and, uh, and the United States. And over the last few years, uh, uh, back with uh, President Bush and then President Obama, who has really embraced this whole notion of the importance of the Rock U.S. Alliance, it's just continued to get stronger. And I think the key ingredient to that has been how close the Rock and U.S. militaries work together. Uh, we, I've seen that in my two years here as we've worked through some tough security challenges with the North Koreans, and we've prevailed with that. Major George Andrew Davis Jr. was assigned as commander of the 334th Fighter Squadron during the Korean War. During a flight on February 10, 1952, Major Davis and his crew spotted 12 enemy aircraft speeding toward an area where fighter bombers were conducting operations. Major Davis flew at the enemy formation, singling out and destroying an enemy aircraft while under constant fire. During another attack, his aircraft took a direct hit, spun out of control, and crashed into a mountain. Major Davis was awarded the Medal of Honor for his bold attack, allowing the fighter bombers a successful mission. Major George Andrew Davis, Jr., a Pacific hero. As the country began to rebuild after the war, Businesses boomed, and soon the Republic of Korea became one of the strongest economies in the world. South Korea was in economic difficulty after the Korean War. But for 60 years since the Korean people worked hard, several countries from the UN helped us out. South Korea could become an industrial country and achieve economic growth.
The armistice agreement was a phenomenal event for the Republic of Korea in every aspect. We experienced political stability after the ceasefire, which gave us a chance to develop our economy. The post-war period of recovery was a good opportunity for Korean companies to grow. There was a high demand for construction from the U.S. forces to rebuild South Korea and Korean companies helped to meet that demand. These companies built up their confidence and became more competitive through this process, and this enabled them to enter the global market. Although the current system will hold up for a while, I don't think it should continue. I think we should push for reunification and I think the rocuous alliance plays an important role in making this happen. Reunification will contribute to the Korean economy because it will increase economy of scale. If we could use North Korea's human resources, it will help us to advance in the global market. Reunification would also greatly decrease our national defense spending. We can save on resources and unnecessary spending that goes into ideological conflict and focus that into the economy, which will make a huge impact. These are benefits we can experience through reunification. Augmentation to the United States Army or Katusa program began in July 1950 with the outbreak of the Korean War. Such a close collaboration between two nations' militaries was pivotal for success during the war. Decades have passed, but the alliance is stronger than ever. The Katusa symbolizes the two nations' friendship and mutual support. Today, no less than 3,800 Katusa soldiers are serving alongside USFK, fully integrated in various units, including medical, communication, military police, and combat arms units. Sixty years ago, the Republic of Korea was a country devastated by war. But with the signing of the Armistice Agreement came new hope, giving the people an opportunity to grow and rebuild as a nation. Today, the rocuous alliance is stronger than ever. With this bond created 60 years ago, we will maintain the peace and prosperity on this peninsula. I'm not going to use big words or, try, or, or become emotional, but I would just like to say thank you. It's a wonderful feeling. I have to do over and know what I know now. I'd do the same thing. Oh, it's awesome. What these people have done with this country is just unbelievable. I think that the Rock US Alliance is crucial for the peace of the Korean Peninsula and the world. I would like to thank all the United Nations countries that uh, came to Korea to defend us against communist aggression, but especially to Americans for sending their fathers, their uncles, their sons. I cannot express how grateful people like myself and many, many other Koreans are for the sacrifices that you have provided us. Very emotional. <laughs> when you think 60 years ago, came across this bridge in Russian Molotov trucks. But on another note, look what it has done for us. Look what it has done for you. If you come to Korea, if you see Seoul, you see a city that is free and is full of hope and dynamic. And I just want to say to America that every smile that you see in Korea is because of what you did for us 63 years ago and what you have been doing for us for the past 63 years in supporting us, in being patient with us, and in having understanding towards the Republic of Korea. So, thank you.